Hey guys, so I'm going to make a really short video and I'm just going to briefly go over the different types of neurotransmitters that you need to know. Um, so just a, a brief, um, just a brief review. The neurotransmitters are the chemicals and the chemicals are inside of the axon terminals. And these are the chemical messengers in the nervous system. Each chemical has a different message to send. And so they reside on the axon terminals here. And as the electrical impulse shoots down the terminals, it pushes the neurotransmitter out into the synapse and into the neighboring neuron. So um, that's just really brief, but now we're gonna talk about um, the message that each neurotransmitter sends. So we're just going to start with acetylcholine and um, just a tip to remember this. If it sounds like um, take a seat or uh, lean. So acetylcholine um, deals with movement. So taking a seat and leaning deals with movement. Um, it also has some other functions like um, memory. Um, but if you just remember taking a seat and leaning, this is the messenger about movement. Um, you will be asked some things like um, what happens if there's not enough acetylcholine messengers or what if there's too much. Um, you won't have to know that oversupply and undersupply for every single neurotransmitters, uh, but this is one of them that you will have to know. So in low amounts, um, acetylcholine can um, cause Alzheimer's. And so if you think of Alzheimer's, starts with an A and so does acetylcholine, then that might help you remember that Alzheimer's um, is linked with low levels of acetylcholine. And so um, I spent a long time trying to find some little um, uh, images and things for you to help you remember. So you've got a little girl trying to take a seat. So acetylcholine is what helps you um, send messages about movement. Um, also memory, that's where the Alzheimer's comes in. Okay, next is dopamine, and dopamine is the neurotransmitter that um, communicates messages about pleasure. So this is um, your like reward when you're motivated to do like rewarding behaviors. Dopamine, that's the message that's being sent. So if you just think of, um, it's like your pleasure um, neurotransmitter. I think this one's really easy to remember because um, I, when people say that's dope, they're meaning like, oh, that's so awesome, right? And so I think that's an easy one to remember, um, your pleasure sending neurotransmitter. Um, if you do not have enough dopamine, then um, that can lead to Parkinson's disease. And if you have too much, that can um, be the cause of schizophrenia. Okay, next we've got serotonin. And if I think serotonin makes me think of um, uh, Sarah, and you think of like sad Sarah, then sad Sarah um, may be having trouble with her mood. So if you just remember sad Sarah, the alliteration sad Sarah, then that might help you think serotonin is mood. And so um, I've got a little mood swing for you. Serotonin is your mood stabilizer, is what keeps your mood stable. And so um, in low levels of serotonin, people can suffer from depression. So if you think sad Sarah, that's your mood. Serotonin is what helps you stabilize your mood. Okay, so then we've got epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, I remember these because I it, I know that epipens are named epipen because of this epinephrine. It's um, a stimulant. So whenever someone's getting an, ep an epipen, they're giving themselves a stimulant. So if you don't know that and that's hard for you to remember, then... Um, um, if you can, like, maybe if you think, I don't know, if you can uh, link something with pine and, I don't know, the smell of pine trees makes you really excited for winter. Um, I don't know. So, but it's your body stimulant. So um, if you think of anything that can amp you up, it's your epinephrine. This is the neurotransmitter form of adrenaline. So in your nervous system, if your nervous system is speeding your body up, it's using epinephrine or norepinephrine. And then in low levels, this could cause depression. Um, GABA is uh, the neurotransmitter that is your body's natural like relaxer. Um, 
And so um, I don't have a great mnemonic for this, but I just think of like if some when someone's starting to like fall asleep and they're getting really relaxed, they might start to like slur their words and it might sound like gabba, gabba, right? So gabba is like a relaxer, um, not necessarily like sleep, but it's a calming um, muscular body relaxer. It brings your body down. Um, the next one is glutamate and glutamate is your uh, message sender about learning and memory. Uh, the last one is endorphin, and the endorphins are your body's pain reliever. So whenever your body's experiencing any kind of um, pain, um, if you fall and break your leg, or um, I mean any anything where you might experience pain, your body's going to send out signals to try to relieve that pain for you naturally so that um, maybe you can get help, or maybe you've heard those stories about um, somebody lifts a car off of someone else in this um, this really tense situation, and and they're just kind of able to do this superhuman thing, and they're able to do that through this strength, and and they don't feel this pain that they have that they're going through, and that's the body is sending endorphins to allow them to do that to um, stop the pain, and so this is your body's natural pain reliever. So when you're in pain, your body's going to send out an endorphin, which will um, relieve that pain temporarily. Um, uh, sometimes people say that the endorphins make them feel good. Um, I don't want that to get confused with dopamine. It, it isn't necessarily meant to make you feel good. It's meant to relieve the pain. And because the pain is being relieved, people feel good. But it is a pain reliever. Okay. And the last thing that you need to know is the difference between agonists and antagonists. Agonists and antagonists are substances that act like neurotransmitters. They aren't neurotransmitters, but they act like them. And so it's something that you take in your body and it will get into your nervous system and be like a neurotransmitter or stop the neurotransmitters. So the agonists, I think um, of the word go in agonist, it makes your message go. The agonists are substances that chemically um, they look like and they fit into the receptor sites like a neurotransmitter would and it would make the message go. So maybe if you're um, lacking something um, in your neurotransmitters, you can take a substance, a psychoactive substance that would act like that substance that you're lacking and it would go in and send that message for you. Or an antagonist, um, I think this is easier to remember because an antagonist in a story is like the bad character. Um, and so the antagonist is going to go in and block the message. Um, for whatever reason, maybe you want the message not to be sent. Maybe you're getting too much of that message. Um, or sometimes um, substances, um, illegal substances might go in there and stop a message that should be um, being sent, but will not be sent because the agonist goes in and blocks the um, neurotransmitters at the receptor sites. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions about this. Okay, thanks.